I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, it's Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic. So I'm going to do a video about anti-aircraft. If you're a CV hater, watch the video. If not, if you love CVs, watch anyways. Maybe you'll learn something from it. But if uh, this is more primarily focused on the anti-aircraft, I think one of the comments said that, uh, hey, you think AA is trash and you're just a hater. I was like, well, no, not really. I just think that, you know, having watched a lot of YouTube videos on World of Warships, I think the, the, uh, the idea of anti-aircraft fire is kind of interesting topic because it's automated first of all right you have no control over the anti aircraft other than the way your ship is built and how you build into it and so now i'll show you some of the builds we'll even do maximum builds of the ship and then we'll, the only other thing you can do is hit the o button and maximize focus fire or focus strength on one side of the ship so i'm like okay there's nothing more i can do i can't aim the guns i can't aim more accurately to shoot the guy down so really this is kind of one side where the the cv player can actually uh, first of all, it has an airplane that moves faster as like a missile, can actually maneuver and refine their targeting systems better than I can as a slow moving ship across water, as opposed to an airplane which dominates the skies can actually shoot and, and eliminate the, uh, the destroyer better. So one of the comments had asked me, what can I do to be a better uh, way, a better destroyer player to avoid CV fire or mitigate it? Honestly, as much as I can try to show you it, uh, it's really just luck. I mean, there's nothing you can do because you're a slow moving destroyer uh, that can only maneuver at so many speeds. You're limited by the, the mechanics and the physics of water and how the destroyer moves. It's a big ship. It's hard to move. But an airplane is small, nimble, fast and accurate, as well as dropping ordnance that can be more precise. So for me to try to you know show you how to mitigate that is kind of moot because there the cv player has an advantage of controlling the air aircraft as i only have control of maybe automated anti-aircraft guns so i can't do much but why not try to see what can we do to shoot down as many planes as possible and do a couple juke maneuvers here and there at the very end so that's all i can do so let's show you too i wanted to see which destroyer since i'm a dd main what destroyer now what we can do more videos about you know cruisers and battleships later but let's see what, what is the best anti-aircraft uh, destroyer right now because I know I can go in and cap and torp and gun and gunboat and everything. That's easy. But let's see what what would we do to be the best DD player for the given strength. So from tier 8 and tier 11, that's all I play. I don't play anything lower than 8. Uh, uh, most of the time it's 9. But we just ranked it right there at 8 and 11. And then, of course, we select every single destroyer possible in every category and hit the anti-aircraft button hit the AA strength, and what comes up? Ragnar. Yeah, I just did videos on Ragnar, one of my favorite destroyers out there. Reason why Ragnar does so well is because the DPM is uh, great. The AA strength is obviously long range. It's got low, long DPS is only 39. Wow, I never saw it. Why is the AA strength 83 then? Hmm, I'm not really sure. Medium range is where it's bread and butter is at, but that means that the airplane has to get within four kilometers, and by the time four kilometers... So, if you don't know the mechanics, I think a video best is really good exp explains it is Flamu and Flambass to do a really good job of talking about what as soon as the airplane, let's say, enters the 6.9 kilometer ring, right? So plane flies 6.9 kilometers within your ship. That means the gun should start killing the thing, right? But no, it's not a video game reality aspect. It's it's triggering the system to actually start shooting at the plane. So by the time the computer and the system, the algorithm and everything processes correctly in the RNG, the plane has already traveled all the way into your maybe six and a half, 6.4. So by the time you actually start shooting, it's already almost in towards your ship and you're already starting to die, you know? So this number is kind of, uh, you got to take it with a grain of salt. So it's even with six kilometers, that means the plane will probably fly within 5.5 to five and start shooting you then. So you're already at a disadvantage because your guns aren't firing yet. So the big, the, the problem with the Ragnar, even though it says it's got an 83 strength, the long range DPM com compared to the Delarna, and you notice this is the funny thing. Look, all the European DDs are here. One through six are all Europeans. I'll actually do a uh, another video on the Joshua Humphreys. I haven't gotten it yet, so I'll, I'll get that. Humphreys and see if it's AA is better, but it's a super ship. Tier 11, not really fair, right? Delarna also not fair. It's a tier 11, but I digress. We'll try it anyway. See if they are the best AA platforms out there for you to use. But the problem right here is long range. I mean, it's only killing the guy. What is this? Long DPM, long range or a continuous DPS, which is a damage per second, I believe. So you're only knocking up an airplane 39 points per second. Imagine like an FDR, Federal, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt airplanes that are literally have 16,000 uh, HP. Uh, 
imagine if you're only knocking 39 second, 39 uh, damage per second. That's nothing, okay? So, but look at the Dalarna. At least it's getting 210. That's a little bit better. Now, the, the damage for, let me see if I can scroll the screen over here. Yeah, so, ooh, did I do that correctly? Yep, my bad. I, I just the way I set this up, but the AA strength here, four kilometers, and it's doing three, I don't know if you guys can see this, 378, um, forgive me, I can't scroll over to the right uh, based on my recording, but it's 378, just believe me. Hey, four kilometers, I mean, you're doing a little bit more damage uh, at the Delarna, but hey, the Ragnar does 669 at four kilometers, so the plane literally has to be on top of you and is already doing his bomb run by the time it's actually shooting 669 per second, so not the greatest. Uh, let, me, let me cycle so I can see the flak strength here. Let's so let's show flak strength. Uh, flak strength is showing the Dalarna is at the highest at 93. So Dalarna is shooting uh, at six kilometers, 210. So it's got the best flak strength. So flak is those big bursts that you see in World War II. Go go Google it and learn about what flak is. I mean, a shell fires up, it's got a fuse in it, explodes, and it's supposed to fire sh a shrapnel all around and hopefully destroy an airplane. It's got six flak clouds plus three. So it's got one of the best flak strength right there. I believe it's a lot better flak count. Also the Dalarna. And yeah, so literally the best AEA strength I'm seeing here is the Dalarna. So We'll try Ragnar. We'll try Delarna. I think Delarna has the best right now, followed by the Smallen. I thought the Holland, Holland and Smallen are kind of identical. So you can, we'll try out one with the Smallen and the Holland, see who has the better AA strength. We'll actually try to build into the AA strength and see if we can maximize the AA and see what it does. And uh, we'll take a look at the video. And again, as well as I'll focus, see other, uh, other, um, uh, nations out there, the Joshua Humphreys of the American side, American, apparently that's the best American, um, uh, destroyer for uh, AA, and then they followed by the Elbing. So Elbing at least is doable. Most of you guys can grind Elbing out in the tier 10. I have that ship, so that actually may work out. It doesn't do the greatest long-range DPS, so it's only got 4688, but it's still high up there for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, it's a short range. Short range has got the highest, so that's why it's ranked up there. And everybody else is kind of crap after that. So really, it's the European line that has the best AA. So let's take a look at uh, how that actually pans out, and we'll take a look at the build. All right, so here's the uh, first iteration of the Ragnar. Basic, uh, everything is the same. The only thing I changed is, is in Mod 6, which we'll look at, which will replace with the Auxiliary Armaments Modification 2, which gives you a little bit more explosive damage, more flak burst explosions, and a little bit more continuous AA, plus 15%. So we'll, we'll select that. Uh, again, I'm just doing this for you guys to see. I'm trying to save money. I'm not trying to waste money here and uh, just switching the builds around. Now, this is the basic Ragnar build that I normally do, and it, it should be decent enough for the gun build. The gun build alone should be enough. There's not much AA you can build into this other than the gun build's already right there. You can see it gives you an extra explosion on the AA, and then, of course, the main battery AA specialist gives you plus 10%. Having the other one plus 15% AA damage, I mean... We could select that, but for sake of not spending all this doubloons and money, I think this is probably a decent build of what normally people may run. And here's here's kind of the, the statistics right here. Hit probability, six the 4%, 4 kilometers, 100%. Probability pretty high up there, 846. And then the long range, you can see 6.9 for 49. So that that's as much as we're going to get right there. As you can see, uh, priority sector is 35%. Continuous damage is 540 uh, damage by shell explosion. The way we built it is about 2,000. So every time you see a shell explosion, hopefully it takes 2,000 HP off. And uh, then we'll uh, we'll kind of what we'll do here is we'll kind of throw it into a training room scenario and then see what it actually looks like in a real battle. So let's take a look at it. All right, let's take a look at here. So this is kind of I just set up in a training room. Again, disclaimer: these are CVs. There's three of them that which would normally not happen, and they're not built to the full potential like a normal player would. Like you know, building for extra armor, reduction in damage, and so forth. So this is kind of a complement of trying to make it more realistic. Three versus one makes it a little bit better since they don't have the upgrades. You can see right there, nine planes destroyed. We're racking up some damage with this AA build to see if it does more. Again, I've picked kind of a comparable uh, matchup fire. because you may get a Lexington nowadays tier 8. You may get a, a Nakamov, which is pretty strong. Problem and solved, you could sir. probably get a United States, which is a you know, super carrier. So uh, that, that's just the basic thing. I did one of each so we could, because, the, again, the disclaimer is they are not full builds. They're not re, uh, human players, which would dodge flat clouds. They're just going to fly through through flat clouds and so three versus one may be a little bit more comparable to get the AA damage to get 
kind of a, a decent amount uh, to see if it actually works. So let's take a look at this. So uh, also we're going to describe how I maneuver. Now you can see uh, what, what do I, how am I maneuvering? If I see a rocket plane, which is a, a fighter attack aircraft that shoot rockets, I'm going to nose in. That's the first thing you do to mitigate damage right there. See, I'm mitigating as much rather than taking a full broadside shot from uh, aircraft. What you do is you find, look on your mini map. Okay, torpedo planes are coming at me, which means I got to turn away and become slim profile. Again, rocket planes and torpedo planes, you want slim profile, which means I'm either turning in or turning away. You can see I'm using the mini map as best as I can to maneuver and mitigate the damage. That's what you're supposed to do as a destroyer player. Always pay attention to the mini map, who's coming at you, where they're at, and where they're coming from. So right now, look, I'm hitting the, um, all I can do is hit the uh, the O button in the priority sector area and the, the, the planes. And you can see I'm knocking down planes, 87,000 damage already right there. Uh, that normally would not happen in a normal battle. Uh, those are very rare uh, when you see getting about 87,000. But again, this is three carriers that are computer-based bots that are just flying straight into flat cost. So we're just trying to see how much damage this thing can pump out. Uh, in a minute here or in a second and let's see right there look okay, there's a long range you can see as soon as it enters 6.9 you can see it doesn't start actually affecting the plane until 6.5 for the ragnar you see so uh not that's that's the problem i'm seeing in flamu and flambass i talked about it where yes it activates at 6.9 but the damage doesn't start happening until 6.5 it's not like instantaneous so you're actually just triggering the computer system go hey start firing damage will happen once the shells travel there it's simulated to then uh, start affecting, like you see right there, as 6.9 came in the United States, you see the little tick, tick, tick. Now you see the 3,000, once it hits into four, and you're starting to get a little bit more damage there. I think there are a couple of flat clouds that go long distance, I'm not sure. See, outside of four, you're only seeing that 58, 58. Now we're starting to see those big flat clouds happen, and we're getting a little bit more juicier damage right there. Anything inside four is doing great, and it always starts getting into the, the inside or inner ring, which is like about three or two and you're not seeing as much. And also the problem is once they start their attack run, there's, there's like a transition of invulnerability, I believe. They said that you can't shoot the planes down once they're in their attack run. Uh, for the main, the other planes that are just flying around, they get an invulnerability kind of uh, free, what's it called? Um, a grace period, if you want to call it that. That it doesn't kill them until uh, a, a certain amount of time has passed, and then you can start shooting at them again. Uh, again, take a look at these long range right here. So. Uh, you can see that uh, I can't really see somewhere uh, looking at the t yeah once you see 6.9 start going in the range I start firing about 60 60 yeah a little chink damage here and there and we're getting it once they get inside about 4 4.9 4.5 I think there's a couple flat clouds that you see in there wow look at that, all that damage right there that's pretty nice that's what you want to see in a game right there that's what's supposed to happen but again these aren't built for the full modifications uh, okay, so let's see here. United States is coming. I'm looking at the mini map. United States is coming in that ring now. Once he hits the 6.9, okay, 6.9, and by the time C damage takes off, about 6.5 or 4 actually starts the damage. So about a half kilometer, 0.5 actually starts happening. Ooh, look at that nice. If they fly right through that flat Engine cloud, boom, you, do, you get about a couple thousand of damage right there. You can see there are a couple flat clouds uh, with the way that we get the builder. So there, I'm not saying, see, there's like a one or two puffs there, which tells me that, hey, out to five. To six kilometers, there is kind of a, a puff cloud uh, that is there. So maybe there is something. I thought it was just that four kilometers, so I believe there is something. See, I'm only getting 59 damage at 6.0, 5.74, two. Okay, now we get one a little puff cloud there. So I'm not really familiar as how or whatever the mechanics or the coding on this is. It just seems very random to me. Uh, I'm not really sure the programming. Maybe there's a better analysis of it out there. Let me know in the comments below. I'm always uh, looking to learn. I don't know everything. But I'm just testing here and seeing what it does. Okay, he's inside. Look at that. He's in and only get 1,000 once he's almost in. He's already dropped his payload. So, I mean, it's almost too late and moot at that point. Maybe it's Wargaming's way of being fair for airplanes. Otherwise, we'd lose CV players okay, everywhere, right? Let's see here. Can we knock that Engine plane down? At deactivate. this point, a lot of the planes have been shot down. Look, we're at 111 planes shot down now. So... I mean, the, the, in normal games, it would take a while for the planes to replenish. I think the computer, after three carriers, uh, they're already kind of exhausted of all their planes. So pretty much this is kind of an easy turkey shoot for us, uh, especially even since these are bots and they're not really trying too hard. Uh, again, I'm going up against a Nakamov United States. That should be fair enough, right? So 
We're shooting all of these planes down. Okay, there we go. Nice. So that's the kind of AI I want to see. Long range out. 3,000 damage right there. Look at that. Uh, 1200 see so if i'm running away he's got to drive through all this flat clouds i'm trying to get as maximum amount of time in those flat clouds as possible again looking at the mini map where's this guy coming from i'm just basically either slim profile cheat away run away that's all i can do uh normally that's kind of what happens in a real game anyways you're spotted from by dd and again i'm keeping my a on on at the on the whole time because i want to see the ragnar start shooting right away i want to actually uh, bait the carrier to come at me and see if he can actually um, use skill and maneuver through all the flat clouds now we're going to see a real game in a minute as to how that actually pays off but uh let's let's see how this actually turns out here you got a kill right there okay here comes the uh, nakam off with his planes and these are the scary ones these are the um the, the drop bombers okay finally we get nine kills right there wow it's a lot uh, United States is diving. Oh, he doesn't make it either. Wow, pretty strong. Hopefully this actually works in a real game. Uh, but so far, yeah, pretty decent, pretty powerful. 139 planes, 227,000 damage. If I saw that, I would like fall out of my chair in a real game. I mean, that is ridiculous. That's literally, you're knocking out battleships and cruisers at that amount of damage. All right, it doesn't look like he hasn't, they don't have any more planes left, so we're pretty much wrapping this up right here. Uh, I think we've pretty much kind of seen what it can do just with the Ragnar by itself. This is assuming nobody else is helping you. Uh, most of the time, you should be around other players that help you out. And again, uh, players will build into heavily armored and reduction of damage and so forth. So again, these, these bots right here are not upgraded at all. They're just the bare bones. I believe, unless they are the ones that I've built. I'm not really sure, because I've built for armor and uh, damage reduction uh, in the mod, so I'm not really sure how the training room actually implements these. Let me know in the comments below if you have an understanding of what the training room actually does, but I'm just thinking these are bare bones, so I'm assuming the worst. He gets that torpedo run off, and the Ragnar is terrible at dodging torpedoes. Here, there's a bad spot on me. There's little to no chance of dodging Nakamov torpedoes, you can see right there, so... There you go, chat. If you want to figure out how to dodge the Nakamov, it's very it's just basically finesse. Everybody else, at least their torpedoes are spread out, but the Nakamov is probably the one of the, the worst uh, uh, CVs to, with torpedoes to go against. Uh, we're in the secondary range of the most. I'm trying to just end this thing because I know I've already kind of figured out what, what's going on. It just seems very decent, as you can see. Uh, once they enter that 6.9, the, the short DPS starts happening and then once they get within five maybe a couple flat clouds go in four kilometers of a bread and butter and now we're go down so there you can see right there uh what what kind of damage you can do with the basic ragnar and uh then we'll take a look at a gameplay it took me a while to find a gameplay and uh i mean cause it almost seems like everybody's trying to kill you uh or i'm sorry it's trying to avoid your you know aa builds so funny 267 thousand damage that's ridiculous but yeah i was trying to find a lot of games but it was hard to find so let's take a look at one yeah, you wouldn't believe how long it took to find uh, a game because it seemed like they were <laughs> the game RNG or the computer knew that I was playing an AA build video and it, it just avoided so many times with no carriers, no CVs. I'm like, wow, the first time I'm, I'm not playing a game with CVs, but here we are. Finally, we found one, and it's a good thing it's an FDR, which is the Frank Lauren Della Roosevelt, one of the most, most armored, heavily tanked planes possible, or like A10s. And look, here we go. So we're checking out, out the flat clouds. How is it doing in there? We're ticking up 300 damage. Man, we are not. I mean, he is dodging. Say, look, this human players right here. They got the bills. They're dodging the flat clouds. So you can see, I mean, although we have that build going, uh, not doing so much. We only got 767 damage right there. And let's see. We got, yeah, those fighter planes. That's a freebie. Those are, they, don't, they don't do anything. Just otherwise circle. So let's see if we can help out our CV here. All right, we got another run pass run here. So we turn on our A, we hit O on the right side. So they shoot the uh, priority sector on the right of our ship. Let's see what we're getting here. I'm getting okay damage, thousand damage. Uh, still shooting, getting, just scamming away, and he's running away. Okay, so will he come back? Notice, again, I'm not playing uh, the game uh, objective per se right away. I'm trying to see, just testing out uh, how to, these AA guns work on this destroyer Ragnar, the way we build it. All right, we got a couple hundred there. Nice. He's flying through the flat clouds. He's dodging a lot. He's weaving and dodging, weaving and dodging. And, ooh, we're getting some nice shots right there. Ooh, I like seeing those flat clouds. Blowing them up, blowing them up. Only got one kill. Did we get another one? See, there's that transition period. And we killed the last one, hopefully. Oh, that someone else got the kill. Anyways, that, that was that's just the FDR right there. I don't think that I got much. That was, I mean, 
it's cool to build full AA build on some of these ships, but it's not really worth it. Most people don't build it that way. So I kind of build it in a comparable, even though I said at the beginning of the video, hey, let's try to do max builds. Sometimes it's just not reasonable because look, most of the time the CV is not attacking you. So it'd be a waste of points. So let's take a look at another run. Okay, this is just me having fun shooting a gearing, whatever. And here you can see the mini map. The torpedo planes are in, so uh, AA is active. It's firing. Unfortunately, I was too busy shooting this gearing to fit the O button. But let's see, the AA, we shoot one plane down. And let's see, what else are we doing? Yep, I finally activate it there. Shoot another plane down. 11,000 damage. We're getting some nice damage up there. And that's pretty much it. And then for the rest of the game, I don't really engage the CV after that. CV was kind of focused on something else, so. All right, so let's take a look, a look at another uh, video. So now this time, this game was a lot better. We had a Nakamoth, and he is just coming right at us. He's going straight for us. This is exactly what I wanted. Thank goodness found a game. And this the game was actually pretty interesting. So hit the O button on the sector. We nose in for the C's drop. Those are the um, skip bombers. And ooh, he st I still took a massive hit. So there's a little nothing good, but it turns really slow. Those bombs just come in easy. If you haven't ever played a CV, it's easy to aim with those things. Just put the line on the CV and just click the button. And hopefully those things hit your ship. Um, looks like the Nakamov is hopefully coming back at us again. And we're getting some nice shots on the Schlieffen here, just having fun. Again, I have to play the game as well. I've got to help the team out here. I already got one kill. Do we get another kill? Yeah, cool. We got another. Oh, we get a smoke as well. All right, so we're in the smoke. We're firing for free here. We get, uh, okay, at five kilometers. No, just much, not much damage. Here come the flat clouds. A little bit more damage, a little bit more, and about 700, 700. Very good. And knocked out two planes, 11,000 damage. Again, not like the training room. I mean, again, the guys are building for their full maximum potential as well as, you know, the maneuvering. They're avoiding the flat clouds, so we're not getting the full actual numbers that we're seeing on the spreadsheet. But it's that's what we're dishing out. And wh whether they connect or not, just like I'm shooting here, I can I can know the numbers, the stats of how many sec uh, shells are shooting every second. But if that damage is um, not hitting or connecting with the target, then obviously they won't count. I mean, what counts is what actually is registering as a hit and what's causing the damage. So, well, we'll see how we'll fast forward the video to get past this. All right, so we have, yeah, we're just shooting the Vermont, whoop de doo And here we go, we got some torpedo bomber. So what do I do? Don't want to show broadside, I want to start nosing in. So I'm going to start doing a left turn here. Let's see, where is he? Yep, he's coming towards us. We'll hit the sector button. We'll do a left turn to slim profile. Get slim profile again. Look how slow it's turning. It, 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 he's got time. He can figure this out. Within He's already within three to two and a half now. He's going to do a drop. There's a, there you go. Here's that transition period, and we're getting the most of the kills at the very end there. Yay, we killed somebody, but man, that's how you dodge. That's the best way to mitigate. Again, if you see torpedo flames, nose in. Bombers, you go long, uh, kind of keep that long profile. And, of course, uh, fighter planes, same. Go slim profile by turning into the actual aggressing uh, planes and targets. So let's see where it goes from here. Do we get another run here? And Oh, yep. Skip bombers, very skip. So we got to basically nose into them, slim profile. We get the sector up. Priority sector on the left, and what are we getting here? 60 damage, 60 damage. We got a couple flat clouds there. We got one shot, one kill there. 800 damage there, very good. We got a couple, we're, we killed four. Okay, we're at 22,000, 27,000 AA damage. So not the greatest, but it's something. This game was really close by the way. We were chasing the CV and our guns just do nothing to his armor deck. Not really fair in my personal opinion, but there's nothing I can do as a destroyer player. And then this is the whole time. This is actually a good example of CVs versus DDs right here. So I am by myself, uh, except for the Z42 behind me, but I am literally taking the brunt force and I am just, uh, you know, priority sectoring and just shooting, doing the best I can. Just letting the computer shoot the planes down for me. Nothing I can do here. I just maneuvering, mitigate the damage. We get nose in again on the skip bombers. I get three kills over there. We're at 32,000. And this is pretty good right here because now the CV is just focused on us. Exactly what we want. My shells are just going to non-pin. There's nothing I can do here. Uh, he's just got an armored deck. He's running away. He's slim probably exactly what he's supposed to be doing. So here we go. We're shooting more planes. He's got his fighter jets going here. And they're just coming way too fast. And nose in. Let's see if we can mitigate as many rockets as we can. Oh, nice. We actually passed them. There we go. He was just, it was just too much for him. Uh, actually, I don't think those are fighter jets. Maybe they're just the quick planes or fighter planes. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, we're just going to shoot and wait for another run. We're up to 36,000 damage. and we take a hit from somewhere? I don't even know where that's from. Probably from the left, from the Moscow or something right there. So, yeah, we're getting shot at by everybody here. So we're just on the map, getting shot at, getting spotted at. We're just ringing a bell. 
Yep, and we mitigate. We only take one rocket there. That's good. So we're going to keep firing one uh, kill. Look at that. My team's actually coming back. We were down so bad, and now uh, we're actually coming back. Pretty. This was a pretty interesting game. Uh, let's see here. Knack them off. Draw skip bombers again. There's nothing more I can do other than nose in and mitigate the damage this best I can. And I got the party sector up. Again, this also takes into account that my, my AA guns have been damaged as well. I think I, I went down from 90 to 80%. So a lot of my AA guns are being damaged, so we're not getting the full effect. But we got six planes knocked there. We're at 51,000 damage. So 51 damage, 51,000 damage in planes. That was as best we could do. And all I could do after wave after wave of planes, that's all I could do. I did the best I could, but I was getting shot at at the same time. So, yeah, that's all we could do. And this game was actually pretty interesting. We It turns out to be a loss, actually. So... We actually almost came back, but let's take a look how the Z-42 does against his. If you were looking at AA, might as well look at the Z-42, which does not have very good AA either. So all they can, do, uh, all he or she can do really is just uh, pop smoke and just pray for rain, and hopefully that the carrier passes. He gets a kill on the, the uh, Moscow that was shooting us, and thank you for avenging my death. And now it's your turn to play with the uh, carrier. So, see, so all this is all his defensive weapon is really just duck and hide. Kind of like submarine style where you just go underwater and hide. And this is just uh, giving its own personal smoke screen uh, a little kind of a, its own cover, a man-made cover. He drops airplanes across the Z-42. And there's really nothing you can do there. Uh, and then is he going to come back? No, no, he's got planes. Now he's probably going to attack somebody else. Okay, so, yep, here come the plane torpedo bombers right there. There's that knack -em off spread right there. He dodges it. Oh, no, actually, he took one. See, those are tar hard to dodge, but if you actually drive into them, they don't ha arm until a certain period of time. You can knock them out before they actually arm. And now he's going to have to deal with the fighters. Again, he's doing exactly what you're supposed to do. You go nose in and avoid the rockets as best you can. Slim Pro, slam on the brakes. There you go. See, that's how you're supposed to dodge them. I mean, this is a great video to show you techniques to how to mitigate damage from a CV player. But unfortunately, at the end of the day, the CV just got it just got to get it one get get it right one time. We've got to miss a bunch of times, but the CV player he can miss as many times as you want and try and try and try again, right? So he drops the planes over here, perma spotted without smoke, and now you're pretty much just lit up like a Christmas tree. And now he gets a nice uh, juicy run on him again. Again. This was a cool game because it was an almost good comeback. Of course, I had to die because I was just spotted from the moon and getting shot out from a Moscow. And uh, Ragnar is huge. It's like a cruiser size kind of style build, and it's easy to hit. And let's see here. Game is about to end. Yeah, and yeah, that's the AA. He's not really doing much other than the fighter planes. I mean, he, he survived. And ooh, will he get a blind shot? Oh, yeah, that dispersion was just just good enough right there. Oh, uh, well, anyways, that, that's that's the game right there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. How is the Ragnar build uh, for uh, anti-aircraft, and uh, what do you think about it? I think it's one of the best builds right now for me. Uh, I like Ragnar, very powerful ship, good in clan battles, good in competitive, good in ranked, uh, very, very good in randoms, as you can see with the, uh, the guns being able to just destroy and bully. You know, not only uh, the cruisers, but destroyers, um, or I'm sorry, destroyers, but not that, but also cruisers as well. Uh, you can see right the 31 planes shot down, three kills, 123,000 damage. We'll take a look at the damage we did on uh, the aircraft. Again, I really like the Ragnar. Number one in the team. Look at that. Because all the planes I was shooting down, 31. I mean, when you really are on a mission to hit planes down, that's what you're doing. You can accomplish that. So you just got to have a goal and a mission. Nakamov also in there. Uh, CV players getting all the glory. Yeah, 52,000 damage on aircraft. That was pretty much almost half of what the damage I have could have done with my guns. And uh, that's all I could do right there. So let's take a look at the build that I had for that previous match right there. As you can see, just like we had planned on slot six, doing, uh, focusing on the anti-aircraft. And um, yeah, you get those extra number of explosions produced by AA Defense for that one. And continuous damage plus 15%. And of course, the only thing I can really do, I could go for longer range, which gives that extra, you know, 15% uh, and damage. But I think the Fearless Brawler uh, is enough just right there. Fearless Brawler gives you that extra, you know, plus one on the salvo. And Adrenaline Rush, actually, continuous age plus 2% every time you take damage is also good. Continuous age to 10%, and that's how I build it. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Appreciate all the support. As always, like, subscribe, bell, bell below. You see value in the video. This is part one of a, 
um, multiple part series, and we're going to analyze a couple of the other European DDs, just like we talked about. It's going to be uh, focused on maybe uh, the you know the Holland. Uh, we can do Smallin if we want. I think Holland's just the same as Smallin. Uh, we're going to take a look at um, Jay Humphreys later on, and we'll see some of these other European DDs and see how they actually uh, work and uh, work out for us. So hope you guys are doing well. Stay safe, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers.